Government contracting, $500 billion, that's billion, billion with a B as in Bravo, spent every single year on products and services with federal government. This is a recession-proof market. And you wanna know, how do you get in? How do you get a piece of that pie? And I'm here to tell you. First and foremost, you need a business. I, when first signed up in 2008, I had an S corporation. I still have that company today. I still actively bid on contracts. You want to make sure you have an LLC set up somewhere in the United States or Puerto Rico. Right now, the federal government is providing some extra resources towards businesses headquartered in Puerto Rico. Hey, who knew? This is an amazing time. When I first set up my flagship company, I was really big into my initials. They held importance for me when I was a little girl. My grandmother would engrave them in various jewelry items because she worked at a high-end jewelry store. And so I named my company K. Period Parks Consulting. It's not Kizzy Parks Consulting. It's K. Period Parks Consulting because it made me think of all of the beautiful memories associated with my grandmother. When it comes to a name, choose one that resonates with you. Some like to choose a more generic name because they're thinking, hey, I may want to sell the business some like to use acronyms. I love using like an acronym because now my company is known as KPC, which is great. Three letters, it's easy to work with. And for those of you who already have a business, I have some tips for you in a second. So for all my noob noob noobs, get the business registered, double check the name. You definitely wanna Google the name. And also if your state has a option to search to see if that business name is in use, please do so. Because the last thing that you wanna do is to get through all these steps to realize, oh my gosh, somebody else has this name. Or to get a letter from their lawyer saying, please discontinue using the name. You don't want that to happen at all. You know, Kim K kind of experienced that a little bit before she named it Skims, right? <laughs> so for all of you out there who already have a business, maybe you have an LLC, you have an S Corp, or you have a C Corp, let's say you have a business and has a very specific name, like Matt's Power Washing or Trina's Trucking Service. The question I'm often asked is, do I need to change my name? Do I need to start another company? Do I need to start a company that hits all these different areas? In other words, do you need a company name to fit every bucket you're looking to potentially sell to the federal government for those of you with an existing business? No, that's what's beautiful. Companies like Lockheed Martin and IBM sell way more than what you know them for, promise you. And the same applies to you. So if you have a very specific name for your existing business, meaning you have a tax ID number and hopefully you have a business license and you've taken care of all the requirements for the state in which you're registered, all you have to do is file a doing business as, and you can change it to maybe TA or MAC or what may have you, but create a DBA that's way more generic. So then as you're working with the government, you go by your DBA, while legally you have maybe a more specific name, they're not gonna worry about that. They're not gonna question that because they're gonna know you by your DBA. So that's all you have to do. I would definitely look into filing that before we get to the next step. And that is, in order to be a prime contractor with the federal government, you must do this step. If you are someone who I deem as an expert and there's like an expertise that you just wanna offer to the government, it could be janitorial services, it could be that you're a plumber, it could be that you're a facilitator, it could be that you're a painter, it could be that your wheelhouse is doing podcasts, and you just want someone to bring the work to you, to bring the kill to the door, as we often say in government contracting, you don't have to do any of these things. You don't have to be registered in SAM. But for those of you who are like, hey, I want a prime contract and opportunity, you must be registered in SAM. So once you have your tax ID, the official letter from the IRS, and any other documents from the state in which you are legally registered, as well as your incorporation documents, things of that nature, now it's time to go to SAM.gov. I must warn you, for 
those of you who just set up a company or maybe you're setting it up as you're watching, you know, the video, <laughs> chances are you're going to get an error message that I'm about to talk about. For the rest of you, if you've had a business established for, I would say a year or more, you're not going to run into this issue. I know this because I tried registering another company that I have just to be able to experience what is going on in Sam.gov because my flagship company was registered eons ago, way before TikTok. So I wanna be able to really understand what is going on and to know some of the challenges that you're facing. So I discovered since my business had been registered since about 2019, it's called Adult Fluent. As soon as I entered the information, it popped up, I had no problems. But for those of you who are just standing up a business, what you're going to find is chances are you may receive some error about the information doesn't match, they can't find your tax ID or something along the line with an address. It's okay because you already know this is gonna happen. So you will be prompted to upload some type of supporting documentation. It could be the letter from the IRS, your articles of incorporation, copy of your business license. That's why it's important to have all of these documents ready and in electronic form. If you need to, just use your cell phone, take a picture, get one of the free apps on your cell phone. There's tons of them where you can take a picture and it converts it to a PDF and you can email it to yourself and boom, 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 upload the document. So once you do that, for all of my new, new, new people, now it's time to sit back and wait. They're inundated. So the process to get you a UEI, unique entity identification number, and a cage code can take weeks to maybe a few months. If this is a space that you are contemplating wanting to get into, you definitely want to register like now. And even if you have a business, it still may take weeks to months for you to obtain the key things things that you need to be able to prime a contract just because they're backed up, that's all. So for those of you who are new, you may receive additional emails from sam.gov stating, we're still not able to confirm this information. So what you're gonna wanna do is submit any type of tickets. You're going to want to send them emails. You're gonna have to constantly, constantly, constantly be in communication with them. Look at this as the first step or first level Level, like in a video game. You get through this level, you get to the next level. You get through that level, you get to the next level. This isn't something where you're going through to like get tickets to like a Lizzo show. This is a process you're going to to open up your ability to access over $500 billion in federal government contracts. So I promise you, it's really not that painful. I promise you it's not, it's really not. So for those of you who are well established, you may find that the process is faster, but again, sit back and wait. Who knows, maybe they ask for something maybe they don't, but also what's key for both of you, newbie newbie noobs and my old heads, please enter the information in sam.gov according to how you have it on your IRS documents. Enter it the same way. If you have a typo, enter in the typo. If it has a certain address, you please enter that address because what they're doing is validating that you are connected to this business. Changes can be made after the fact. You just need to get into the system. You know, going back to the analogy with the video game, I know when I've played video games, I mean, I'm not always the best at it. I go through the first level and I'm just like, oh my God, I had to get through it. I want to get through it. And maybe after the fact, I learn, oh man, there were some coins over here. I could have received some new weapon by going here. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know I could put a headset on and play live with other people. Who knew? And so maybe after the fact, I may go back and make some different changes because I have new information. That's how it works with Sam.com. Gov. Things are always evolving and changing and sam.gov is more than a system to just, hey, you're certified, now you can like get contracts. There's even more to it. But the thing is you can always go back. You can always make changes. So let that perfectionism just go away, y'all. Let it go away. Once you get through all of that, you're going to end up becoming certified. And once you're certified, you're going to start filling in all of this information about your company. They're going to ask you about these NAICS codes. They're gonna ask you for a summary. They're gonna ask for all of this information. Out the gate as a brand new government contracting company, you can just put a little bit of information in there. I've been in this space for well over 10 years and never has someone contacted me and said, uh, are you Dr. Parks? Because I was looking at your Dynamics 
small business profile and I want to give you this $20 million contract. Woo! I mean, never, never, not even a $2,000 contract. That's like never happened. So once you get through this phase as a new government contractor, your next step, bid, bid, and bid. It's plain as that. The only way to win in this space as a federal government contractor, the main way is by bidding, bidding on different opportunities. Also, it's really important to have a mentor, have a coach, and learn as much information because while bidding is the key to winning and growing your business, you also have to understand what is it that you're looking at and what is required of this actual bid. And I promise you the answer is not, oh, I can just hire a proposal writer. You're just gonna make a proposal writer or add to their bank account. You're probably not gonna win because what's important is understanding because there's different levels of contracts, there's different requirements for the opportunities, and there's different strategies for you to take to win federal government contracts. This is not something that just happens through happenstance. It's not something that happens through just luck. And it is not something that happens because you're an 8A, you're a woman owned, you're service disabled, you're economically disadvantaged woman owned, you're cute, you're an Alaskan native, or you're Indian owned. No, you still have to add value. You still have to provide the product and the service. And most importantly, you must understand what you're getting involved in. There was a couple who I briefly spoke with and they had a business and they got involved in government contracting. And they were super excited because there was this opportunity that involved shipping and it was like really connected to what they currently did. They um, worked with like a kind of a local small business kind of office and they put together their bid and lo and behold, they won. And I believe the entire contract bid was maybe, it was like a million dollars or so, like right out the gate. They were just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Woo, government contracting, right? Well, what ended up happening was that particular agency ended up only spending maybe $30,000 the first year on that opportunity because it was something where it was around their utilization, right? So kind of think of it in terms of electricity. Typically, we're not just charged a flat rate. It's not like, okay, $10, $20, there's your flat rate. Typically, you're not. You're charged based on your usage. And that's what happened with this contract, but they didn't know that. They had no idea it was that type of a contract. So when they won, they thought, woo, this is awesome, our lives have changed. And in reality, it was more like, oh my gosh, this is a burden. We don't want burdens, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you so you know how to find bid and win profitable government contracts. Whether you're a noob, whether you're seasoned, whether you're a seasoned just entrepreneur or even government contractor, I'm still here to help you through this process because it's an always evolving kind of thing. All my amazing GovCon winners. As you're starting out, you may even ask yourself, well, what is it that I wanna sell? Well, the answer is, it's what is of interest to you. The federal government buys so many different things it's again about what's of interest to you and what can you quickly win. There are opportunities based on their risk level, low, medium, and high, and definitely those low risk items and different services are way easier to win than something that's more high risk, but it's about you. There are some of you that are watching that maybe you're like, look, my background is janitorial, that's all I wanna do. Okay, great. There are others, especially those who I coach, that are like, look, I'm open to anything, I just wanna make a profit. Okay great. And then there are some who are like, look, I have this background in IT. Um, I recently retired from the Air Force and I really want to keep doing this kind of cybersecurity thing. Great. There's opportunities there too. There's no one right answer. This is a journey. And what's great is on SAM, on FedConnect, on Unison and other places, you can take a look at what's out there that's live and active. Not things that they purchased in the past because just because they bought something in the past doesn't mean they're going to buy it in the future. So all my amazing people, please like, please subscribe, please hit that notification button, please share. And I wish you nothing but being a winner and succeeding in this GovCon space. And please comment below, especially if you are in the process of getting registered in SAM, I would love to hear from you. And don't forget y'all, go to govcomwinners.com. I'm releasing the class very soon and it's great to get it now because in the future, the price is going to go up.
up. Not as high as like a Rolls Royce SUV, but it's gonna go up. So please check it out. And also because I adore each and every one of you, check out profitablecontracts.co, profitablecontracts.co. I have a great guide there to help you out on this journey. And don't forget, everything is possible. Have an amazing, amazing day.